Sarah with the Job Gym Podcast. Today we're going to talk to the machine about um, first aid, really, pretty much. So do you want to tell us what you want to talk to me about? Yeah, so here at Mantra we um, offer first aid to anybody that um, does the SAA course. So it is one of the requirements on the SAA course. Um, however, I thought it would be a really nice idea to share some of the um, information that we provide on the course. So I thought that I would talk about the Dr. A, B, C and D. Did you know that we have an I and added D at the end, Sarah? What is Dr. A, B, C and D? And D. So first of all, it's how, if somebody goes into cardiac arrest or if somebody isn't breathing, it is the steps that, will be, that we would use, okay? okay? So D is for danger. So first of all, if you see somebody lying there, we check to see if we can see danger. So whether it's electrical cable or the fallen or... Because what we don't want to do is we don't want to put ourselves in danger, okay? So they might be in danger, but we don't want to have two casualties. We only want the one, right. okay? So whenever we've checked for danger and we know that it is safe, then we would um, go to the um, person on the floor and we would check for response. Right. This will allow us to see if they are um, going to respond to us and it will allow us to determine what our next steps are. How could you get a response if you saw them? In, what, what would you do? So we can shake their shoulders. Um, we would um, speak into both ears because generally we don't know if they're going to be um, hard of hearing in one ear so we need to make sure that we um, speak in both ears and we would just say hi is everything okay just to see if we can get that response and um, if there's a bit of a moan or a groan then we know that they're responding to us okay um, however if we don't get responding that's when we will go to our next stage and that is A okay so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we check the airways. So what we want to do is we want to lift the head right up, okay? So we would put one hand on the forehead and two fingers underneath the chin and we would bring that right up. Okay. Um, people wonder why we do that, okay? So why we do that is whenever we're unconscious, um, our chin will hit our chest. Mm -hmm. That means that the tongue will go backwards. Now we can't swallow our tongue. It's a myth, we cannot swallow our tongue. Right. However, what the tongue will do is that it'll close the airway. So by lifting the chin right up, it allows that tongue to push forward. Right. So it opens up the airway. So by opening up the airways, then they may respond, okay? If they don't respond, then we would check their breathing. Okay. So um, pre-COVID, we would put our ear to the nose and mouth and we would lock down the chest for 10 seconds. The reason why we check for 10 seconds is you'll usually see the chest move up and down twice. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so generally, in a healthy person, the chest would move up and rise up and down mm -hmm. twice. But if somebody is severely ill, you might only see that rise once. Right. Okay. So 10 seconds is an adequate enough time okay. to see whether or not they're breathing. Then we would... Um, if they're not breathing, we would assume then they're in cardiac arrest. So right. we would start doing CPR. You may want to shout for help. Okay. Okay. The reason for shouting for help, because they might want to go and, and speak to 999 or um, 999 is their emergency service number. But we also have a thing called 112. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard of 112. No, I haven't. Um, 112 is, so for me, I am awful at directions. <laughs> right. I am absolutely awful at knowing where I'm going what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. So if I rang 999 and they went, where's your location? I would not have a clue, you know, right? Okay. And I would be really embarrassed and I would turn around and go, bye. Okay. <laughs> so if I used 112, that allows them to um, use my GPS location. Oh, okay. So they're allowed to zoom in on my GPS. That's about me giving them the consent mm. to zoom in on my GPS. There's another thing called what tree words. No. I don't know if you've ever heard of what no, tree words. Wasn't. Have you not? No. What tree words is amazing. So what it does is, um, whenever I first set it up, I got a wee bit confused by it, mm. and then I deleted it, and then somebody told me about it. I thought it was a really good idea. So what tree words? It goes by a three meter by three meter square. Mm. So um, in this square that we are at now, um, it will be three word associations. So it would be door, car, window. Right, okay. So I would recite that to the 99 operator and they would be able to um, find out where I am. Oh, right. So they'll be able to go, okay, they are in the vicinity of Matra 
and they are in the top left hand corner of my So they know straight away. So they know right? straight away where we are. Oh, and all the world is basically covered in these three by three meter squares in this what three words? Right. So it's pretty neat. It's pretty cool. So you would ring 999 if you're like me, don't know your location, you would give them the what three numbers or what three words, mm -hmm. the three words that is um, on it. And then you would go into cardiac or then you would go into CPR. Right. Okay. So people think that you give breaths first. We don't. Right. Okay. We go straight into doing the compressions. Okay. okay. What they normally say is that there's enough oxygen in the body, so what we will do is we'll do um, the compressions. Right, okay. Now, we have to do two compressions with, within every one second, mm -hmm. okay? So roughly we do 30 compressions and then we do two breaths. Okay. Okay? And we continue that. I remember the advert, it's, is it staying alive, is that yes. still the thing? You can still do that. Um, okay. You can also do Baby Shark. <laughs> right, that's shark. a new one, Baby Shark is the new <laughs> one, so it is. So we can use that, we can use any variety of those, but you have to make sure that you do two per second right, okay. and 30. Now, if you're not comfortable using um, doing breasts, you cannot use barriers. If you've got a first aid kit beside mm -hmm. you, you will find a barrier in which you can um, apply onto the person's mm -hmm. um, face, and it'll just basically protect you from there. But if you don't feel comfortable doing any breaths, that's absolutely okay. The most essential thing that we have to do is do is the heart. Is heart. Okay. okay? Um, there are only three times in which you can stop doing cardiac rest. Mm -hmm. Can you guess what they are, Sarah? Three times. Three three um situations three in which situations. we can stop doing CPR. If there's danger. Oh okay. Okay. Um. A really they, obvious one. They come really around. Yes, that's <laughs> one. <laughs> it works. Okay. That's one. What's um, the other one? I don't know. Hmm. Oh, when the ambulance arrives. Okay. Uh, well, whenever the ambulance tells you to. Yeah, stop, I'm not okay. George Clooney. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Away, I've got this. No, okay. Um, they will. They may tell you to continue until they've got their. The, yeah, set up you. But also, once you're completely exhausted. Right. Okay. Um, if you're completely exhausted and you've done everything that you can, then you don't necessarily, then you can stop. Okay. 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 So, and then defib. Um, generally, what you will tend to find is that 1999 will tell you where your nearest defib is. Okay, so that is the last bit. So we've got D for um, danger, R for response, A for airway, B for breathing, C for CPR. Okay. Right, okay. The extra added is our defib. Okay, so defib, um, the 999 call handler may tell you where your nearest defib is. Okay. Um, usually you'll see them in them secured, locked things, okay? They will give you the code. Oh, okay, okay. So they will tell you the code to get access to it, that you can open it up and get the defib. Generally, I would say go get somebody else to go get that for you, right. okay? Because nobody you're else, gonna be you're going to be busy yeah, doing the, the uh, CPR. You would then apply it. Um, they say that without the defib, the survival rate is about 20 to 30 percent, mm. and that diminishes 10 percent. Okay, without the defib. With the defib, the survival rate goes up to 70 percent. Oh, that's, that's really good. That's and then that diminishes, oh, massive, the mm. amount of changes that can do to people, but that diminishes 10 percent every minute that goes. Um, right. So it's important to get it as soon as you possibly can. Okay. okay? And hopefully you, you'll be able to survive, and um, somebody will be able to survive with these techniques. That's brilliant. Thank you for that. You're I, very welcome. I didn't know about, well, to be fair, I knew the ABC, but I didn't know the rest of it. And to be fair, I am a bit of a panicker by nature, yeah. so now I feel that it's always good to recap on that. What else do you cover in the first aid class? So I know you cover that, but what other things? We cover the um, recovery position. Okay. So um, again, with any of these situations, you would still go do your doctor ABC, okay? So for instance, you check for the danger, always, always check for your danger. And say for instance, you do get a response, what do you do next? So you would, yeah. you would want to put them in the recovery position, okay? You wouldn't do the compression, so you would want to do the, um, put them in the recovery position, mm -hmm. okay? And I always find a way, and this is, an, and I was, I've heard this whenever I was about seven or eight, mm -hmm. and it was, please miss, sat the face, Lift my leg, turn me around. I know that sounds really well, silly, remember it, yeah. but allow me to remember it. So, in order to get somebody into the recovery position, 
it's also really important a to gain consent from the person mm -hmm. um, or if they can't consent you have to assume that they would want the first date okay. okay so if they can, can't consent but they are responding you would put them in the recovery position okay mm -hmm. so you would put the hand up so the hand nearest to you mm -hmm. put it in like a 90 degree angle okay then um, first of all make sure that there's nothing in their pockets okay and so you would take anything out make sure there's nothing dangerous so you will put the hand up the nearest okay. to you you would then get the other hand but the um, make sure that the rings are turned around okay. so they're not going to hurt this, the face you would put it on um, the cheek but the palm mm -hmm. has to stand out so, okay I've got it. You would then lift the leg okay. on the side of the palm, okay? So mine is now on the left hand side, so we'll lift that leg. And that leg will allow you to just move them over, roll them okay? Over. Roll them over. You would then put the leg at a 90 degree angle, so they're not going to be able to move, okay? Roll back. <laughs> roll back, exactly. And you would lift that chin, make sure that the chin is nice and supported by the, um, the hand. Oh, hand. Yeah. Well, I think that's really useful. It is. It's always good to know, isn't it? It's always important. It but what I would like to do is maybe have you back in a couple of weeks and you can demonstrate it. So that would be absolutely I brilliant. would love to do that. Also, just remember, if you're putting any woman on childbearing age mm -hmm. into a recovery position, you have to put them in the left-hand side. Oh, okay. Okay? Because we cannot assume if they are pregnant. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have to make sure that if uh, we have to assume that they are pregnant, okay? Mm -hmm. Because uh, early pregnancy yeah, and stuff, yeah. you don't know. Um, but the main artery and the food goes into the right hand side. So the main thing oh. to the fetus or the baby um, goes in the right hand side. So you don't. Really so if we roll them on the right hand side, we're going to stop that nutrients going to the baby. I didn't so. know that. I just thought I'd hit that. Always in. full of helpful tips. But I would love to come back next and maybe demonstrate. <laughs> yes, demonstrate it would be awesome. So, um, if you do want to do the first aid course, it is um, off at the job gym. You can always give us a call on 0333 220 6645. You think I'd have it memorised, but I've got a long pen. Um, and you can always check our social medias. We've got Facebook and Instagram, so you can always drop us a line on there if you want. But thanks for that. You're very welcome. Bye. Bye.